everybody and welcome to Grow Garden Grow. I'm Rhonda and I garden in Zone 9A in Southeast Louisiana. It is Sunday morning, April the 7th, and I thought it would be a good time for me to go ahead and take a video of my back garden beds. Before I start the video, I will go ahead and pop up some footage of what it looked like before I started any of these beds back here. When we moved in, there was there weren't any shrubs it, other than azaleas. It was, uh, the back of the house was just completely lined with azalea, white azaleas that reached the second half of the bottom half of the bedroom windows. So I was constantly trimming them back twice a year. And they were such a hassle and they were kind of ugly when the flowers would fade. They just a bunch of brown dead flowers all over the shrubs, but we did take them out of the ground and transplanted them on another part of the property just to kind of create a live fence backdrop to kind of hide some stuff like uh, the barn that we put up. So let me go ahead and turn this around and I will start the tour. So everything you see out here was grass. It was just all grass out here when we first moved in. But I'm going to walk over here and start videoing from over here. This first shrub is a frost proof gardenia and so is this one next to it on the other side of the, well, on the steps. This one right here I've replaced three times. I am not quite sure why it keeps dying in this spot. I don't know if it's the soil. And I've also replaced, this is a purple daydream lore petalum. I've also replaced that one three times. And I'm really not sure what to do because these are thriving so well. And I just kind of wanted to mirror each side of these steps. So I'm, I'm, at a, uh, I'm at a standstill with it. I just don't know what to do. Uh, this also had the uh, white azaleas that went up to the bottom half of this window. And I figured it was time for something different. I was just tired of trimming them. So right down here, I have Happy Returns, Daylilies. Then I have a spider's web fatsia. This makes it through our frost and freezes. We don't get down below generally into the teens very often, but we did this winter. It did have some dieback, but it's already putting on new growth. I have a Minuteman hosta planted back here. This side of the house gets morning sun probably up until around 12 o'clock, I guess, on this side. Back here in the corner, I have a Nico Blue Hydrangea. Now these beds were all, this bed back here in the back, in the bed over there on the side, these were started last spring when we pulled out the azaleas. Down here I have a Daylily. I, can't remember what the name of this one is. I do have the card for it, so I'll put it up on the screen. In the very back, I have Daydream, Purple Daydream Lore Petalums. I did re have to replace that one once. I'm guessing that's why it doesn't look exactly the same. But they did survive the winter. My other four on the other side of the steps did not do so well. Right here, I have blush pink nandinas and in the fall they turn a brilliant crimson red right here i have caramel hookahs also had to replace one of those that one right there is new i had an issue with the armadillos last year one or two of them they kept coming back here and digging up my plants i would come out and my plants would be dug up the roots would be hanging out of the ground <laughs> so and I believe it was because we had a horrible, severe drought last year, and I had to come out here and water these plants just about every day. My husband said that armadillos, they like to dig in softer soil. So I guess they were struggling to find their grubs, their grub worms, in the regular areas of the yard because it, the ground was so hard. So I had to fight armadillos for probably two months before they finally disappeared. Right here I have some Peonies, and these are either Margaret Truman or Sarah Bernhardt. I have yet to see these bloom. I planted these in my raised garden bed three years ago, 
and they looked horrible every year they looked horrible sun scorched so I wasn't sure if it was just too much sun for them so I moved them out here and they actually look better than they ever have right here I have a white rose of Sharon I don't know the name of this I've had it for several years I've transplanted it probably three times it's just a single bloom white flower and then I have some Patriot hostas down here those I planted from bare root and had them in containers this is a, I need to look at the tag because I don't remember which one. A thread branch gold mop. This has been transplanted as well. I had it in my woodland garden. It was not thriving at all. And I have a Japanese snowball bush back here. This is the ugly area. <laughs> and then I have planted a purple fountain grass. This part of the this part of this bed was um, created from here, from here over to the back. That part of the bed was created last fall. So all of these plants along this side of the patio are all brand new. This is a transplant from another part of my woodland garden. I believe it's called Melody Parfum. And I have two Limelight Prime hydrangeas planted right here. I planted this one last fall, and this one I just planted a couple of weeks ago. And they do turn uh, pink here in the south. My, all of my other hydrangeas that are supposed to turn pink, besides the Limelight, um, the Little Lime, I'm sorry, besides the Little Lime, it does turn pink. These turn pink, and the other ones, the um, limelight, the strawberry sundae, I have not had any luck with those turning pink. They just kind of start turning brown and fade off. And my bobo hydrangea turns brown as, as it fades instead of pink. This is a pitiful looking pinker bell rose. I transplanted it um, a couple of weeks back because the place I had it in just wasn't thriving. And it looks like it's possibly starting to come back out. But it does have the most beautiful white and pink edged roses. I have a Rainbow Sensation White Gila. I bought this while I was visiting my family in Oklahoma. And this is the first I've got to see it bloom and it's very beautiful. It has a variegation on the leaves. I also started some seeds back in January. Right here I have Love in a Mist, Miss Jekyll. I'll put a picture of what the bloom looks like on the screen. I haven't gotten to see these yet. I've, uh, I don't think I've ever seen these on video or just I ordered them from Baker's Creek Seeds. So I'm excited to see what that's going to look like. And I have some Cat's Pajamas, Nepeta right there and right there. I'm new to cat mint and I've been struggling with cats actually rolling in them and breaking them. <laughs> I guess they like the scent. Right here I have a kaleidoscope abelia. That's new. I planted that probably three weeks ago. This is a coral bark Japanese maple, I'm trying to remember the name, Sango Kaku, I believe. My husband bought this for me because I requested it uh, for my birthday two years ago. And it's really put on a lot of growth. I'm surprised at how much it's grown since I've put it in the ground. It's a beautiful tree. Right here is, I think it's called a honey apricot. I put the tag, picture of the tag on the screen. I'm not 100%. It's the one that you can actually eat. <laughs> I don't know that I will be tasting it, but it does have some, some buds on it. I haven't gotten to see this one bloom yet either. It's been in the ground for about a month. Right here I have another golden mops. It is a lemon thread false cypress. 
I also bought that while I was visiting family in Oklahoma. I haven't seen those down here for sale. This is a Winecraft Black smoke bush. It's about half the size uh, that it was about three months ago. My son accidentally stepped on it. It was in a different part of my yard and he backed into it and didn't realize it and broke off part of the branches. But I think that it will look pretty good right here. We'll fill out this whole area. Right here I have a Forever Goldie and it did struggle last summer in the extreme heat and drought that we had, but it looks like it's recovering. Eventually, I'm going to cover this whole area with pine straw instead of this pine bark mulch all the way through that side under the swing. When I first started out here, the swing area was the first place that I started building a, a bed, a garden bed. And I used the pine bark mulch, but it tends to wash really bad. This bed right here was next. And then I made this bed last, started this in March of last year and connected it to that bed under the window. So sometime within, by the end of the summer, I should have this all incorporated with pine straw. So all of my beds back here blend together. This is a hardy hibiscus. This came from my uh, mother-in-law well, it, after she passed away, we brought it home. It was in a container out in her backyard. She had it in a covered, under a covered lean-to. So I decided to take it home and I planted it two, I think two years ago, but it wasn't here. I actually transplanted this three times. It started out over there, somewhere in the rock area. And then I moved it over there and now it's here and I really wasn't sure if it was going to survive because I did move it at a bad time. But I'll put a picture of the blooms on this. It's actually very gorgeous. It's a solid white. Down here I have some hoppy red dye. It's hopi or hoppy red dye amaranth. And I have several of them planted throughout right here. I think they get about six feet tall and I really wanted something to come up behind this this barbecue pit, this ugly barbecue pit. <laughs> Last year I had Tithonia back here and it just filled out this entire space and it was probably six feet tall. It was beautiful. Walk around through here. Um, this is a cranberry hibiscus. I believe it's also called a mahogany splendor. I propagated this from a cutting. Right here I have Gara and I kind of think it self-seeded itself here because I don't recall planting that. <laughs> um, back here I have some Liatris. I think it's called Blazing Star and it's just now coming back through the ground. On my trellises I have planted some Climbing Phoenix Nasturtium. I have two planted on each trellis. I'll back up so you can see. They, short, they should um, cover the entire trellis from my understanding. Right here I have Forever Susan Daylilies. I planted these from bulbs, had them in containers and they look absolutely amazing. In front of those are Ming Toy Daylilies. These are a really pretty red Daylily. I have some buds on starting. Right here I have a Pow Wow White Echinacea. I had two of them. I'm not sure what happened to the other one. It was starting to come up and then we had a freeze and it disappeared. <laughs> I have other plants in here that I'm still waiting to see if they're going to come up. I have a dwarf joe pie weed somewhere in that area. I don't see it yet. May not come back. And in front of this, I have some yarrow. I think it's just the common white yarrow. I also have a, a purple yarrow in here somewhere, but I don't really see that one. I'm guessing it just didn't want to come back this year. Right here I have some more daylilies, but I 
honestly, my mind's blank because I don't remember what they look like. I don't remember the name. I don't remember anything about them. <laughs> I guess we'll see when they start blooming. Right here I have um, from bare root, I planted some uh, creme, creme de cassie dahlia. And also I have one in front of that one down there. That one was from last year. That one I transplanted from, from my raised garden bed. This was glorious last year. It was huge. So I'm hoping that it actually comes back. I transplanted it after it had already died back. So I'm not quite sure why it's struggling at the moment. This right here is a, I guess it's an Easter lily. I planted this from a container, probably got this at Walmart or Home Depot, don't recall. I don't even recall what color it is. So it's, I, get, I guess I'm gonna have a lot of surprises this spring and summer. Um, in the back I have Scabiosa, Salmon Queen Scabiosa. Those actually overwintered and I didn't think that they would. I have another one over here. I didn't think that these overwintered, but apparently in my zone they do. I had several more, but those are the only three that I see that made it. This is called White Flame Salvia, and the bumblebees love this plant. Those that I have four planted in that section. And then I have down here some verbena. I don't recall what the actual name of the specimen is, other than verbena. Those I bought actually on clearance from Lowe's about two weeks ago. Right here is a pitiful looking vechichii, be, be, <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce it, vechii gardenia. I have one on this corner and I have one on that corner. I planted these probably six weeks ago. They looked beautiful. They had buds on them. Uh, about two nights later, we had a pretty hard frost and it killed all the buds back and now it's looking like it's just completely dying so I'm not quite sure if it's water if the soil is too wet here because the tag said the tag was confusing one tag said three to six hours of morning Sun another tag said full Sun so I'm gonna move them I'm, I'm gonna try to save them find something else to put here this is called a summer snowflake double viburnum. I've had this plant since 2016, I believe. It was in a small one gallon container. It was probably a foot tall. I've transplanted it twice. I put it in the ground at one place and then brought it here. When I put it in the ground, it was probably no more than a foot and a half to two feet tall. And it has really filled out. I believe that's probably its mature height where it's at now. And yes, it looks like snow on the ground. Absolutely gorgeous. I love to see when this starts blooming in the spring. This makes me so excited. Anyway, this is an orange rocket barberry. I have one on that corner as well. It's just not doing quite as well. I'm assuming it's something to do with the soil in this area. Back here, this is a newly planted um, Carolina, I gotta look at the tag, I don't recall. A Carolina jessamine. And it, it did already flower. These are actually native to our area. They grow in the woods, all up the trees. I have some in my woods, actually. But I wanted something that I could vine over my swing. And it gets long enough that it should cover this whole thing. In these two containers, these have overwintered. I want to say they've been in these pots now for two years and they just, they're abundant. I think it's an Indian blanket flower, a Gardia, Giardia. <laughs> I'm not good with some of these names. This is the other Vichii Gardenia. Down here, I've planted some alliums from bulbs I think they come from bulbs don't they <laughs> I'll have to look and I'll put a picture if needed 
These are the sens Purple Sensation Alliums. They don't look so great, do they? None of my alliums that I planted actually look very good. The tips are, are brown. I don't know if it's a frost thing. The frost got them because they had already sprouted before. Um, well, we, we had a, a couple of frost after they sprouted. This is a lady gardener gar um, rose. My daughter bought this for me for Mother's Day. Um, I think three years ago, maybe going on four. This has an extremely beautiful smell to it. I was going to touch that blossom, but there's something up in there. <laughs> there's somebody hiding. Anyway, I'm sure you've all seen a lady gardener rose. They are actually be they're very beautiful. They're <clears throat> they have a wonderful smell to them. This is a Carolina Sapphire Cypress. And it's flushing out really good at the bottom. The top has, part of it died back two years ago. And also the, the center right here is cut out because I originally had my blue fountain in there and I had to keep it cut back because it was growing over the fountain. This was originally in there. And this was a DIY project I did a couple of years ago. I believe another name for this is an endless water fountain. It just um, has a container under the ground with a submersible pump. This is where I had some dieback on this cypress tree. If it doesn't start looking better and filling out, especially at the top, I'll probably end up taking this out and find something different. I hate to do that because I really love the look of that cypress. These are two variegated jazz hands lower petalum. I have a short that I posted on my channel when they were in full bloom. It does still have some blossoms on it. The color is changing back to purple. It was originally more green during the winter and when it was in bloom. And now it's getting its purple color to it. This purple color actually gets a variegation to it. I'm trying to find some leaves with a variegation in it. Maybe as it gets hotter out, the purple will become more variegated. They also get five to six feet tall, so I actually like the height back here. I wanted to do a little cozy nook back here behind the swing, so I'll probably go ahead and let these get to full maturity. And right here in the center is a tree that I probably put way too close to the swing and these shrubs. This is a white paper birch, and I bought this online. This is a little twig when I put it in the ground, so I wasn't thinking. And it has put on quite a bit of growth. It's been in the ground for two years now. I'm probably gonna move this somewhere else. I am such a tree lover. I have so many trees in my yard now where there were none. I may do a tree video this summer, just go over my trees. And we're gonna come back over here. Down here I have some white diamond to still be. Those were planted from a bare root. I have more blush pink nandinas. They also, they turn the crimson red in the winter. The more sun they get in the winter, the redder they are. Back here in the corner is a uh, mountain pieris, I think. Let me look at this tag. Yeah, mountain snow pieris. It's already dropped its little buds. Right here I had, well, I have one still, but I had another one, Purple Daydream Lower Petalum. That one came out, it was dead. This one has a few leaves on it, but I'm probably gonna end up taking this out and I'll plant just one instead of two. And on the other side, that is a replacement because the one that was there died. And that one looks like it's on its way out as well. I don't understand why these aren't doing good over here. So I'm gonna buy one more to put under this window and if they don't survive I'm gonna find something totally different because I believe I have bought six of those to replace dying ones I'm so over not buying dying lore petalums <laughs> that will be the last one um, down here I have some hostas these are planted from a Lowe's container a variety hosta I don't know what actual name they are back here these were this hosta was planted from a bare root it's a big daddy hosta and I have another big daddy on this side over here of my Hanoki Cypress.
I actually love the structure on this Hinoki Cypress. It's a dwarf, so it may take 10 years before it reaches eight feet tall. I have spider's web fatsia right there and another spider's web fatsia there. Down here I have some Gerbera daisies. I believe these are the Sweet Caroline or Sweet Memories. I will have to look up and put the name on the, on the screen. These have been in the ground since last summer and I didn't expect them to come back because I don't have a lot of luck with Gerbera daisies in the ground, but these are doing wonderful. I also have some of those in my woodland garden. These I bought last spring and put them in the ground. This was part of the first um, plants that I put in this bed when I redid this whole area. These were labeled vintage white yarrow and they're obviously not white, <laughs> but they're, they're beautiful. I think these are called new vintage pink. Anyway, they are multiplying, as I can see. I had planted five originally, and I can see that they're kind of growing out in different areas, which is fine because I like that cottagey look. Down here, I have some vibrant dianthus. I don't know which species these are. Generally, in a Lowe's or a Home Depot container of these, they don't have a precise name for them, for the colors, just a dianthus. And that's another DIY fountain I did using a container from my mother-in-law's place. She used it for burning wood and I thought it would be a beautiful little water feature in this garden. Back here I have a oak leaf hydrangea. I, it might possibly be the Sims Beauty. Again, I don't know because I've transplanted this probably three times. It was in my woodland garden at one time in two different areas and it wasn't doing good and as soon as I put it in this area of the of the garden it is just exploded with growth. These little plants on the side I believe they're called the Uriopsis. They have really pretty yellow flowers. Post a picture of those also. Right here I have another Minuteman Hosta from Bare Root. I believe they can take a little more sun it does stay a little more sunny on this side, probably up until one o'clock in the afternoon, maybe two. Right here I have some agapanthus, and I've had to transplant, not transplant, I'm sorry, I've had to replace some of these in this section because it was the soil was getting waterlogged last, last year before the drought came. And I think it was bef because this fountain was constantly leaking and it took me forever to figure out where it was leaking from. Anyway, I'll post some pictures if you're not familiar with, with what Agapanthus looks like. I believe I have two different kinds in here. In the very back I have the Diamond Spire Gardenias and they have yet to bloom so when they do I will post a video of those because they are really pretty. These are supposed to reach four feet tall by I believe only two feet, two to two and a half feet wide. So I thought that would be a perfect spot for those as well behind this blood good Japanese maple. I know it may possibly be too close to my house. There is a good distance between it and the wall. I don't mind. I don't have a problem pruning the back branches back if necessary, but I, I've always wanted a red Japanese maple along my house. Down here I have some more caramel hookahs, and I did lose one that was in the center due to the armadillo. I would come out here in the mornings before I would clock in for work and my hookahra would be laid out on the ground. Just the root exposed and all. And that happened several times. I finally covered it up with a milk crate. Some type of crate. I don't know if it was a milk crate, but I covered it with a crate and it was just too late. It just didn't, it just didn't make it another blush pink nandina on each side of this maple. Right there are some white diamond astilbees. I have some more Happy Returns daylilies. They're the yellow color. I know some people aren't big fans of daylilies, but I absolutely love them. I don't mind the strappy foliage. foliage. I think it's a pretty little feature in your garden. Back here I have a golden mops. I have to look at the tag so I can remember. Oh, it's called a thread leaf. This one's a thread leaf. 
I believe this one is supposed to reach five feet high. Of course, I can trim it back if I need to. Down here, I have some more variated dianthus. I have a couple more daylilies here. I don't recall what the name is. I'll put a picture up on the screen. In the back, I have pink molly grass. I actually posted a short clip of these two when they were, when the stalks were blooming. It was breezy, they were blowing in the breeze. They were just beautiful, flowy. This is a Japanese cedar. It's putting on a lot of new growth. You can see the bright green tips on it. This patio area, I'll put a picture of what it looked like before when we first started. It was basically just a really small section off of the steps with a barbecue pit right here. And then I just had a little walkway that went to the swing. I didn't have anything out here yet. It was just the swing sitting in grass. But it's really come quite a, a long ways. I'm really happy with how it's coming along. So this is the row of azaleas that we pulled out from the back of the house. Minus one, we discarded one of them, we didn't need it. It literally looks like a tornado came through here and just strung these sideways. And the reason being is because it was just my husband and me moving these and he used the bucket on the front of his tractor to, lay the, to place these in the ground. And it's very difficult when you've just got one person moving a tractor and another person trying to point where to put it where to place it there they were extremely heavy and once they were on the ground we could not move them so it is what it is i'm hoping that they fill out i can see some new growth coming out this way so i'm hoping over the next few years these will fill out and not look so um so ridiculous <laughs> for lack of a better word but they've already flowered this year so they are they're doing well. I'm very happy. I was afraid that they were going to die. But these never should have been planted up against a house. They just get way too big. I believe these are the kind that can get 15 feet tall if they go unpruned. And that's completely fine with me because I do want them to hide the barn behind me. There are a few blossoms left on it. But like I said, I didn't like how they, the blossoms looked up against the house when they started fading because they turned this ugly this ugly brown color and they were just completely covered in these dead brown flowers out here I'm completely fine with it and it is beautiful when it's in bloom a huge wall of white blossoms it's actually it's absolutely beautiful but that's the only time of the year that this is a beautiful shrub in my opinion well, thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed the first tour of my backyard garden patio beds. You'll have to excuse me for forgetting some of the names. I have planted so many things in the past year, it's just hard to keep up with everything. But the plants that I can't remember, I'll try to put the name of them up with some pictures. You all have a great week. Thank you.